All right, peoples, this is Ross. So today's video is really gonna be a testament to just how resilient fig trees are and also how amazing the cuttings are. I mean, they, they root so easily, but also I have here a pile of cuttings that I took two months ago in, uh, in November when I did my prunings. And as some of you guys know, I've been selling cuttings this winter time. Uh, by the way, the sale's over, we're, we're no longer selling cuttings, but I took roughly over 2,000. I took like 2,200 cuttings. And there was just even, even taking 2,200 cuttings, there was still wood left over. I mean, there's probably another 300 cuttings right here, scattered along here, because I, I just didn't have, let's say the time or um, certain varieties I had so much wood from that I just felt like, oh, I probably can't sell all this wood. Um, even though almost everything sold, I, so I, I kind of just left them on the ground. Um, I actually left them on the patio for a couple days before I actually brought them here to compost down. I put them down on the ground to just sit here for two months. And here it's two months later and I'm looking at these things. I, I mean, I really was just looking at other things and uh, came over this, this direction, noticed that they look totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with them. And there isn't. Uh, it's kind of insane. The ends are a little dried out. Uh, where I made my cuts, so the bottoms, if I made a cut, and the top, if I made a cut, there's a couple millimeters of growth that are uh, starting to die back and dry out. And that's, that's pretty normal. It's totally natural for the cutting or even the tree to reject the wood that is above a node or below a node. So if I made a cut on the bottom, whatever's below that, that bottom node is going to usually dry out and get rejected by the cutting. The tree, it just seems like the, it naturally doesn't want to put any energy towards preserving that. And then of course, whatever's above the top node also gets some dieback. Uh, but looking at these, I mean, doing the scratch test as well, uh, I even looked at some here that are extremely thin because there's obviously different differences here in thickness. Um, this one here is about pencil thickness, what people would probably want as a cutting. And it's totally fine. The green cambium is completely intact. And again, I think I've been through about, really about, uh, I think we got down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit one night. And we may have even seen 10 degrees, but I just have not been paying attention. <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's at least 14, I know that for sure. So these cuttings have gone through basically a large part of the winter time now. It's kind of insane, because January is usually the, the coldest time of the year. It hasn't been the most extreme winter. We have not had a, a polar vortex, at least, that was very extreme in January. If we can get through January without getting a huge, massive polar vortex, uh, we will be pretty looking, sitting pretty here in terms of just how cold it gets in the winter. So uh, we're almost in February. I mean, we're, we're not totally through it, but the 10 day forecast definitely says that we're looking pretty good throughout the rest of January, um, which probably guarantees, at least for me, that we're not gonna see a really extreme low that we normally see. I would say, because we're in 7A, we get to about zero degrees Fahrenheit most winters. So I would say maybe once every other winter, uh, maybe every three winters. Um, and that's not, you know, totally out of the norm to see zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, however, if we uh, do see zero degrees Fahrenheit, that really affects the fig trees in terms of their hardiness. And it just is quite a shame uh, because a lot of them at that point will end up dying back. If we can see five, we'll be looking actually pretty good with the majority of our figs. And then if we see 10, oh my God, that's, that's like best winter ever, you know? I mean, everything's gonna survive. 
for the most part. Now, there are some varieties that are not very hardy. I've talked a lot about that, particularly one that's called Smith. And uh, Smith just has that reputation of not being hardy at all. And oddly enough, I have something here called Texas BA1 that's getting through the wintertime right now, has not been protect protected, has not even been pruned. And I wanted to see really what the hardiness was of this particular variety. It is very similar, if not the same, as Smith. And I have a friend, a couple friends, who have grown this side by side to Smith and they swear it is different. So I am under the impression it's not Smith. However, it is sort of, in a sense, a Smith that can get through the wintertime because edible landscaping in Afton, Virginia, they're in zone 7B. They say that on their website, by the way, that's where you can get this variety for anyone interested. Uh, they say on their website that if you have it in a protected location away from the wind, um, it will survive the winter time. So that's really interesting that, uh, that there is a, maybe a strain of Smith or something very similar to Smith that um, can indeed survive the winter. So I figured, well, let's try it, right? Let's, let's see what the deal is. I think probably your best bet is to not prune it. You know, if you're really trying to get a fig through the winter time, probably as minimal cuts as possible, if any, in the fall, save your cuts for the spring. Uh, maybe I will sell some cuttings from this, assuming it does get through the winter time here. But that's pretty remarkable, I would say, so far, although it's only been, I think, 10 or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, this tree is looking fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Obviously, if the cuttings on the ground that I cut are looking great, you could imagine that this tree is still looking great. But what I'm planning on doing is we're going to keep you guys updated because I, I seriously doubt the lowest temperature we're going to see is 14. Um, I would imagine at least 10. So if it survives 10, that's a pretty good sign uh, because I know a lot of people struggle with Smith. and. Another thing I want to mention is that it's not very well lignified and it wasn't well lignified um, in the fall when I compared all of these trees over here that I've cut back. I compared the lignification and observed which varieties actually looked the worst and this was one of the varieties in this section of the yard that looked far beyond the others in terms of how bad it was lignified. Uh, to this day, obviously as the leaves fall, there is no more photosynthesis, so the lignification doesn't really continue, it stops. So whatever, however far lignified it is really in the winter time, or in the, in the fall, that's where it will be in the winter. And it does look like, at least to my eye, that it has lignified a little bit at least from what I'm seeing, because it doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look great. Like this is still semi-green. Um, I would say a greenish color, whereas the wood down here at the bottom is definitely a browner color. And then obviously the older wood is gray. So I would argue still not very well lignified, but I mean, yeah, I think this is pretty interesting. What I'm gonna end up doing is definitely pruning this for anyone that's interested on a quick pruning lesson is that there's so many shoots from the base. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 shoots from the base. Plus there's, if you count these uh, extra four or three up here, you can maybe even make an argument that there's 17 fruiting branches, which is probably just too much, but really we'll focus on the base and I'm gonna cut out really what's in the middle here because I want this tree, it's an absolute necessity for this tree to have its branches well spaced away from each other so that nothing's shading out the wood. We need to have good light penetration into this variety. Otherwise we just will not succeed with it. It's just impossible. So I may even do some staking and I may bend these larger branches away from each other um, and then cut out the thinner stuff even though the thinner stuff at the bottom is really well spread out 
got to keep this under control. And if we do that, it should fruit, assuming it gets through the winter time. Of course, assuming it doesn't take any damage. If it takes some damage, it's not like it's impossible for this to fruit. However, it's less likely now because uh, the tree is then gonna focus a lot of its energy towards putting out lots of shoots in all different directions. And the only way we're gonna be able to combat that ourselves is to remove a lot of that new growth. So it's really important um, that we keep the new growth in check in the spring um, you can just rub off the new buds that come out because this is a variety guys smith is the same thing it loves to put out new shoots in the spring like all over the place this whole branch might be covered in new shoots and you just don't need that we really don't we probably want maybe like three or four here at the top and we want them to be well spaced same thing over here so you know uh, we don't want to get too carried away otherwise we get less light penetration and uh we just don't we don't succeed anyway guys so that is the video here obviously these trees underneath the uh you know the cut and cover method they look fine because if this guy unprotected is doing so well and also the cuttings on the ground are doing so well what's my uh what's the issue right here's actually a uh, little ruby this is more of a dwarf fig that i'm growing and I'm sort of experimenting with it just to see how dwarf it really is and how small of a space I could grow it in. I don't think the fruit quality is really all that good, but this could very well at some point make a decent rootstock for people who want a very small fig tree in their, in their garden or in their yard. And you could graft onto this. And, uh, I think it'd be pretty interesting, at least for people somewhat in the future, is to use this as a rootstock. Now, obviously, some of this growth is getting a little bit vigorous now, but you can tell how kind of dwarf it is compared to, let's say, the super vigorous Smith and uh, Texas BA1. And I believe Little Ruby actually is uh, quite hardy so I think this one actually has already gotten through a winter that was quite cold here um, yeah it has as you can see this is last year's wood and it grew new growth from last year's wood that obviously has survived um, so yeah I don't know interesting <clears throat> excuse me there um, yeah, so that's kind of the video here, guys. I hope everybody learned something. I just keep continuing being in awe of figs. And it's amazing, I think, how resilient they are, how hardy they are, and what we can really do in these um, colder places, shorter season places. All right, guys. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care. See you for the next one.